Welcome back. In this video, we'll learn about the next topic that is enhancement of script support functions. So in the previous video, we have seen script support functions where I've left two different options. The reason was those two tabs can be categorized into one section named as insert timer into a script. Now, as the name says insert timer, it will insert some timing related options into your script. Let us see what are those. I have first one, if you see that's a timer in this particular window in the script support functions. What does a timer do? Basically, you have to insert the name of a start timer and name of the end timer. What this timer will do? If I have particular script, I want to understand the time required for execution for this particular script. So I can insert a start timer at the beginning and the end timer at the bottom. Using this timer after execution, I can see the amount of time required for this execution of particular script. Not only for this particular script, but for a particular section in the script, I can easily find out with the help of this timer. You can insert more than one timers into your particular script and find out the performance of the test. Now, similar to timer, we have a sleep command, but sleep command is nothing, but basically it will pause your script for particular seconds. So if you use here, let's say as five seconds and click on insert code, a code would be generated into your script where your script will stop for, or you can say as pause for five seconds. Let us see practically how you work on sleep and timer into your video. All right. So let's see the next one. We have timer and sleep commands into script support functions. Let us proceed now. I'll click on this record button. I'll create a new script named as D underscore timer underscore sleep. Click on finish. Now a normal execution, I'll do it. Uh, but before starting the normal execution, or you can say recording, normal recording, I'll click on this script support functions and I'll use the second, third option, which says timer. Timer is basically used to measure the time required between multiple steps. Why it is required? So we are basically doing functional testing, but inside functional testing, a part of non-functional testing is also given. Non-functional testing is just measuring time. Okay. So we are also measuring time here, but for single load, not for multiple load. So what I'll do is I'll put a timer T1, which says we have to start the timer. I'll just expand here. I'll click on close, expand this purposely. I'm expanding so you can see what the script generated. Click on script support functions, select the option timer, type here as T1, click on insert code and you can see timer start, which is given as T1. Okay. Now I'll click on this close button. Start the application classic Java A, click on OK. And I'll do a normal recording of selecting books and, uh, you know, composers selecting some books, click on place order, uh, you know, log on something, click on OK. Entering some credit card number and expiry date. Now, after this expiry date, before clicking on this place order, so that users who are executing the script should be able to see what is going on. So what I'll do is I'll pause my script for five seconds. So for pausing, what I can do is I can click on this script support functions and go to this sleep command here. Sleep, I can put here as five seconds. Make sure you put as five and click on insert code. So here, if you see sleep 5.0 semicolon, which is given sleep command. And sleep command is with inserted, which is nothing but a pause. I'll click on close button, click on place order. So order is successfully placed, click on OK. Now I'll close the application. After closing the application, make sure uh, since you have started the timer, you have to end it. So I'll click on script support functions, click on this timer and stop timer, insert code and I'll click on close. So the timer has been added, the stop timer. Now, finally, once everything is done, click on this stop recording. Right. So let us have a walkthrough what we have actually recorded. So the main area why we started this, uh, you know, video here to show you the timer start, the timer stop, which is given here. And also we have seen how to work on inserting sleep command. We can also write it in, if you have a knowledge about the Java code, you can simply write this timer stop and proper using the syntax and all, then you can work out. But if you don't know, you can take help of script support functions. Finally, when once it is done, 
I'll click on this run button and uh, click on finish. Right. So execution has started and you can see steps have been executed. Right. I'm expecting here a pause after this expiration date, which should be for five seconds. Right. You see the sleep command it is paused for five seconds. Once it is done, the remaining steps would be executed. Right. So sleep worked out. I didn't, don't have to show you in the results pane, but yeah, my, my job is to show you whether the timer and how much time is required for that, uh, the timer, how much time required for the entire execution. So this was the overview. I have selected TPTP format. Now I'll go back to this events tab and expand this. The finally at the end, if you see timer and T1, timer and T1, which says, and if I expand here, yeah, select on the left hand side timer and T1. And at the bottom, if you see extended properties, here, if you see the elapsed time, which is given as 30.909 seconds. So that is the total time required from starting till ending for the entire uh, you know, script execution, right? So this is how you can work on the timer part and also on the sleep command, right? I hope you have understood. That's all for this video. Tutorialspoint.com. Simply easy learning.